Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a Google Nexus 7 running Ubuntu 12.10 Touch Preview. So this is a preview of the upcoming uh, touch-capable version of Ubuntu for phones and tablets, and um, it's very much a work in progress, and I'll show you, uh, you can get a sense of the user interface and how certain things work here, but there are a lot of applications that just are missing or are not working. So for instance, it says here 14 tweets received. I haven't actually linked a Twitter account to this, it's not linked up to a dummy Twitter account, it just says that. You can't actually swipe it and do anything. But from this uh, lock screen we can bring up a list of frequently used applications and we can get back to the home screen. From the home screen, you can see frequently used apps, favorite contacts, again, I have no idea who these people actually are, uh, recent music, videos, and so forth. We can also swipe between home screens, so we can see a people view here, music, apps, and videos. And from videos, uh, for instance, if you tap on one of these videos, you uh, see an interface to buy or rent videos. And from here, let's go back to the home screen. From uh, same sort of thing goes, I think, with uh, with music. In fact, I think if you click on recent music, none of these are actually on the device right now, so you can't play them. Um, people, let's see if we can get. Uh, any information from the people. Okay, it's not actually going anywhere right now. <laughs> So you can switch between applications by pulling from the side here. There's no support for landscape orientation, which means that, um, among other things, you can't do side-by-side -side applications here, but you can sort of preview an application and go back to what you were doing before. And there we go. Some of these apps are actually just dummy apps. So for instance, if I pull up the calculator, it's just kind of a picture of the calculator as far as I can tell, unless I'm doing something wrong here. If we go back to the home screen, let's pull up an app that does work, which in this case is the web browser. And from here we can bring up a keyboard and a URL bar. It's a little easier to type on when I'm not on camera. And so we've got, you know, your basic web browsing experience with pinch to zoom and so forth. Tap to zoom doesn't seem to do much, but we can open links, and it seems to load pages pretty quickly, so that's good. Again, we can switch applications and get back to the home screen. Notifications are sort of interesting, so from here we're looking at battery, we can close that. We can just take a quick look at the clock. And you can also switch between your different notification options. So we've got messages, and again, these are messages from people I've never heard of. Um, so I think they're just sort of there to show you how it works. And also how you can clear a message, for instance. And we can go to messages, sound, networks, battery, date and time, and I think that's about it for now. So in terms of you know overall functionality, it's not necessarily something that you're going to want to replace Android with right away. Um, in fact, last time I tried to get the Gmail app to open, it wouldn't open at all. This is basically just the website for, uh, for the Gmail application. Um, but the web browser works. I believe the photo application works. I don't know why the keyboard's not going away. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, it's a little tricky, you can see here when we're trying to look through photos in the gallery, if you swipe from the side of the screen instead of seeing a photo, you wind up switching applications. Um, so again, there's really, uh, you know, it, it has some basic apps built in. It has a media player, it has a web browser, and uh, a game called Ski Safari. 
which doesn't quite fit on the screen entirely but at least it's one of the few things that runs in landscape mode. But uh, in terms of sort of day-to-day -day functionality, um, I think it's uh, uh, pretty rough around the edges. So it's not necessarily meant for replacing your Android operating system if you're trying to get a completely usable tablet. But if you're looking for um, a sense of what Ubuntu on Android or on, uh, on tablets is going to be like once it does become available, you can try it out now. And if you're a developer and you want to get a sense of the user interface and you want to um, uh, practice using the software and uh, perhaps look under the hood and sort of see how it runs and how you might be able to do more with it. You can see the phone application, the web browser, the um, uh, other apps and uh, Canonical, the company that makes Ubuntu, is, uh, is soliciting help I think coming up with more applications for the platform to make the whole thing a little bit more useful. So that's a quick look at the Google Nexus 7 running Ubuntu software. And you can find instructions and details on how to install it at littleimputing.com. And um, you can find more information at ubuntu.com about Ubuntu on Android uh, tablets. Uh, right now it's available for the Nexus 7, Nexus 10 tablets, and the Nexus 4 and Galaxy Nexus smartphone. Eventually the, the goal is to uh, partner with device makers that will see tablets and phones coming with the software pre-installed later on. Most of those devices are going to have faster uh, hardware than the Google Nexus 7, which is at this point almost a year old. It's, uh, it's kind of ancient as far as tablets go. So you can see that certain things aren't necessarily quite as fast as they could be, even though we're mostly just running fake apps. So, um, anyways, that's what it looks like. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.